Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing something a little different. I've got a um, tutorial on my channel about how to do textures on PO, just making signs, stuff like that. Um, and it's got a lot of traction recently. A lot of people are watching it and getting a lot of comments. So I decided to do a bit more of an updated version because PO has changed quite a lot since I last did that one. And obviously it doesn't have any voiceovers or anything like that. So with this, I can go into a bit more. I do apologize for if I sound weird. This is the first time I've recorded live and done voiceover at the same time. Uh, maybe it's a test for streaming later on. I don't know, but we will definitely see. Uh, and apologize if you can hear the background noise. It's busy today, lots of stuff going around. So, so we're gonna get in and I'm gonna show you how to do a few cool things with textures and PA. We're gonna make some signs and just paving and different things so let's get in there shall we okay so now we're in game and i've not done a huge amount here i've just put an lut on and a theme just to make it look a little nicer using the uh, default square to start with now there are a few things you're going to need to start us up one is going to be procedural objects obviously very important the link for that will be in the description um a few things that come with that mod are these two shapes so you've got the cube and you've got the plane there is another one available which has like circles, triangles, and a few other little shapes that you could use for this. Um, but for what we're doing, these will be absolutely fine. Um, the other thing you're going to need is either editing software or a nice texture you like. And you're going to need to know where your textures go. And they're going to procedure objects texture file, which I will now show you on screen where that is. Okay, so all of our files need to go in there. They have to be PNG files, so .png and I'll display that um, and that's what you need to know put the image in there and away you go now the thing I like to do to start with is once I've got my texture into the folder is go to procedure objects go to texture management which is the third one in and then click on refresh once you've done that you'll see that number there I, my mind says 44 textures that will change depending on how many you've got okay now if you ever want to find it where your textures are you couldn't find it based on what i showed you there's a button here that says open texture folder you press that it'll open and it will show you where they are make sure the files are pngs and they can go in there nicely okay once you've done that and you're happy with that it's time to make our object so decide what we want to do so to start off with we're going to make a nice little path um, and a few things i use for that is obviously we have your actual pathways i hope it goes to the right button doesn't it so clear actual pathways um, I use the invisible paths but that is completely up to you how you want to do it so we use the standard path to start with and we're going to put a path down and then do a nice little shape there you are that's our path so this is it to start with okay and now to give that a custom look and a custom path we're going to go to find it which I'd also recommend you use if you don't have it find it too is fantastic and we're going to select the square I don't recommend the cube for this square will be fine i use that more often anyway and you'll see why when we get on to do things like the sign and stuff like that so i'm going to use that you're going to click it so it shows okay once you've got that clicked and on there you don't want to put it down keep it on your mouse like i've got and then click at the bottom where it says convert into po now your convert into po sign may be in a different place it may be up top it may be down the bottom it may be wherever you put it because you can move it Okay, so click on convert to PO. As soon as you do it, you'll see this new box open. Okay, now this is where our textures are. Now, if you're still not sure, click open folder to see it or press refresh to refresh the list. I always click it by default, just in case I've forgotten to. So we'll click refresh and then we'll click on local textures, the little arrow down, click on that and it will show you all your textures that you've got. Okay, so then you'll select the one you want to use. Now I've got quite a few that I have here um, there are some amazing new ones that have just been put up on the workshop by Z Green Gaming. It's a great friend of mine, a great friend of the channels. I'll link him down below, but these are here up here. I recommend them, they're fantastic. I don't have them installed for this, um, just because I forgot. <laughs> That's regardless. So let's crack on um, and I'll show you what to do. So we're going to click one. We're going to use this red to start with, this red floor tiles that I've got. And as you can see, we've got that and I can pop that down like so now what i need to do is i need to get that to go to the ground now there's two ways of doing this you can either click on the plus go to edit 
and bring it down which does work not always depends how level your ground is the other way you can get this to go to the ground is if you use move it to move it on select marquee selection and then click on where it says po the little button that says toggle procedure objects click on that and then po you'll see appear and it's clicked so you can highlight it might be a little difficult to find if it is then all you need to do is double click where it says po turns the rest of them off and just got po and you can see i can highlight it, it goes pink click on that and click on the little toolbar button down the bottom for move it and then you can just go to align and terrain height at this point it's very important to see if you've got that aligned correctly so we'll get that aligned where we want just by using those little moving arrows and to get to that you'd obviously just go to edit and then you can move them okay now we have a few options you can either do a quick move of it so hold down control select the red one move it across and then place it and let go of control and it will pop it down again for you or your other option is to go into the original object and go to edit go to customization down the bottom here and then you can click and highlight the two circles on the end drag them out to where you want and as you can see it automatically repeats it for me so it does it all for me the good thing about doing it this way as you can see my path isn't as straight as i wanted it to be so i can then move these slightly up and i can get them to the level of where i want so there we go and we're gonna go there and go back just come out and i'm pretty happy with that looking path now we're going to do it again just coming up to here so quick over cap we're going to go to procedure objects so find it procedure object square click make sure my brush size is the right size so there we go go to convert into pa go to local textures find the texture we want which in my case is floor tile floor red click that level it up to where i want it let's say there for the argument's sake and i'm going to put it down now we're doing a separate part on procedure objects it's quite handy because you can just click on the plus go to more go to line heights and then you just want to find the other one which is around here there it is click on that and it will line it to the same level for you so you're messing about with that and getting them so they're slightly wrong sometimes you're going to want them to be slightly wrong and that is if you're overlapping in any way okay so i'm going to line that up to where i want it to be and i'm just going, going to do what i did before and i'm going to resize that so it looks like it belongs where i want it okay and then what i've got is i've got this lovely path now first things i want to do is i want to make the path invisible so i said as earlier at the beginning i do like to use the invisible paths because they hide nicely so i'm just going to make them invisible get rid of the print there we go and then we have our nice path now you can decorate that as as you wish like you know put some curbs around it a fence you know whatever you want to do make it look nice and fancy that's uh, completely up to yourself i always like to put curbs on but i don't have them on this one for some reason i must turn them off so we're going to use the fences just to make it look a little nicer than it actually does because let's be fair it looks a bit hideous on the same at the moment so let's bring those fences in now the other thing that you may have noticed is the texture is quite light so something that city skylands does and does a lot it does this the same with asset making as well as it does heighten the color of the textures you've put in there so at the moment i've got these textures they're nice and red they look more pink than red at the moment so what we're going to do in a moment is we're going to darken them now there are again two different ways of doing it depending on how you wish to but the most common way is going to procedure objects finding the plus click it and at the bottom you've got a little square with white in it okay so you click on that and then you can change it you can make it darker if you wish you can even change the color if you want so make it blue uh, it's a bit more difficult when changing the color because it is base goes over the base so it's good for mixing colors so if i want to have a, a very pink i can do that but at the moment i want to leave it as it was and just make it a little darker there you are that's nice 
Now, what I then like to do is I like to go to store with that color. And as you can see, it puts it down the bottom there. Now, what that's done for you is that's enabled you to be able to have every bit of this pavement or anything you want the same color without you messing about. Okay, so when you're done, you come out of that, just click off, and you've got the other one, so it's still too bright. Go into there, click on that, click, so click on your plus, go down to your white square, and then you've got it stored at the bottom there. Just click on that, and there you are, it changes. So very easily, we have a nice red path. Now, the text is not the best, I'll be honest, but it is there. Now, a few other options you've got is if you go back into your procedure object, go to edit, move your textures, you can go to advanced edition tools, and you can change things like the tiling factor, so the weight of tiles, maybe you want them smaller, maybe you want them bigger, um, whichever way you want, maybe you only want the two, so like that. Some people like that, it is a bit odd, it does, I've moved that, that's my bad, but yeah, you can change the texture to however you want, um, by default it's on eight. So you can also mirror it, so we can chop it around, see? Mm. And we can mirror it around, and we can also change it from repeat to stretch. So you've got a few different ways. Stretch, I don't tend to use this really. Um, repeat is probably the way I want. The only time I ever have it stretched is if you bring in a texture that's too small, say like a sign, and you wish to make it a little bit bigger. Um, in this case, you will see that on the next one when I do the sign in the moment. That's how you do your path. So the next thing we're going to do is going to create a sign using various different types of things. So the first thing, we're going to use our plane or our square. We're going to bring that back in. And then this time we're going to select a sign I have. So we're going to create a ad. So I've got this advert, which is in a square. Now, first things we want to do is I want to turn this not into a square. This wants to be a rectangle. Obviously it looks a bit squashed as a square. So if you click on the plus, click edit, customization, and then we'll just make it to the size we want. Now, as you can see, it's been cut off. But like I mentioned earlier, go to Advanced Edition Tools, change it from Repeat to Stretch. And you can see there you are. It's fitting a lot nicer. So you just stretch it into a happy. I'm quite happy with that. Again, as before, it's a little bright. So let's make it darker. There you are, look at that. So we've got the colors in nicely now. So what we're going to do is using Procedure Objects, we're going to Edit. At the bottom where it says position, we're going to hit that twice, go into rotate. As you can see it's the green one we want because we want it to stand up. Now you can click that. Once you've got it highlighted, start moving it and then just type in 90. And it'll flip it 90 degrees for you. Let go. There it is. That way you'll get a perfect 90 degree turn and you can just move it to where you want it. Now... This type of sign that I've made here in this texture is designed just to go up against the wall. You may want it freestanding, um, so I'm going to show you what to do there. The first thing you need to notice is that the back is just a repeat of the image, so you can create another back. Again, we'll do that the same way. So we'll grab the texture, we'll convert that into a PO, and then we'll grab what we want as a back. I have a nice metal style texture which I love to use. There it is. Test. Now that's not the one. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to again rotate that 90 so it stands up nicely and then we're also going to get it to go level with the other one. So we're going to do that just nice and easily by line rotations. Click on here and it will rotate to the same. And we're going to bring that in. I like to do just from a front view so I can see exactly where I'm doing, so you can get into the place you want it. There you are, that's perfect. Let's grab the edges in, and then those ones as well. And you do that just by right clicking on your mouse and just highlight down, so you've got a mark, okay? Then bring that in, like so, so you're happy it's on there. And then you can just move that into place. Now we're gonna use the same texture, we're gonna make the uprights. So the best way of doing this is again going into find it and you've got the cube. We're going to use this now. So go to convert to PO, select your texture, and we're going to use the same one again. Get it so it's level to where you want it to be. Say so there. Now you can rotate this at this point before you put it down by holding down the 
right mouse button and just spinning it around the screen. So get it to where you want and then press left to place it. Now, a few different things in this, you need to go into edit, advanced edition tools and change it to repeat to stretch. Always stretch on this, otherwise it does get a bit funny. Okay, once you've done that, go to customization and we want to resize it. Now, there's going to be a few ways of doing this. You can do this in general tool and you can just click on the bottom button there where it says position, go to scale and then you can just scale it down if you wish. And you can make it smaller to whatever you want. Now, my preference is doing customization and highlight the areas I want and bring them in. I just find this gives me a bit more control to what I actually want it to look like. So once I've got the upright and I'm happy with it, which I'm not, but I will be in a second. Now I am. I can then go to edit. Now, in this case, where I've done it manually, this happens. See, the pivot point is well off. To fix that, we'll go to customization and go to recenter object points. So clear object origins in this case. Click on that and then go back to general tool. You can see it's right in the middle. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to place that where I want it. Now, I want it to be roughly about there on the back. Make sure it's not coming through the front. And now, what we're going to do again, as we did before, we're going to hold down control. Hold down the red uh, red line and drag it across. And we're going to let go of the mouse and then let go of control. And that's just copied it right across for us to where we want the next one. And then we can just recenter it to how we want. And then you've got a standalone sign. So as people are walking down your lovely pathway, they've got your lovely sign there. And that's basically texturing in PO. It's incredibly easy, quite simple. Um, I use it a lot, I do it a lot for, for many things. You know, I could make this as an asset and import it into the game. Um, it's just a pain, it's a lot of work. Uh, well, it's not. Making a billboard is quite simple, but this is easier. I just open Photoshop, I make my texture and I save it into the folder. Easy peasy and done. And then that, my friends, is it. That's how I make my texture signs, texture paving, and turn this boring little path into something that looks a little bit more inviting, a little bit more snazzy as it were. And I'll give you a bit of eye candy. Okay, so another thing you can do once you've done that is use and move it, PO, selected. You can highlight all of them and move them to where you want it. So at the moment, I want mine to be nice in here. Tucked away in that little bit. So as they're walking down the path towards what would probably be the bus station, they see the sign saying, hey, we take Passamo and Suica. Because they do. And then we know. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed that little tutorial. It's quite simple. More me rambling and showing you what to do and telling you. Uh, more than an actual in-depth tutorial. Um, I like to talk to you like your people, not randoms. So I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you need any more help with anything else, give me a shout. Support me on Patreon and subscribe and like and all that lovely stuff. And I will see you again soon.